Ever stared at a leopard's spots and thought, how does nature paint these patterns? Well, get ready for some mind-blowing science. Back in the 1950s, Alan Turing, the genius who cracked the Enigma Code, proposed a groundbreaking idea about animal patterns. He called it reaction diffusion, and it involves two types of molecules, morphogens. These chemicals, an activator and an inhibitor, engage in a complex dance across an animal's skin. The activator promotes pigment production and self-replication while the inhibitor counteracts these effects. As these morphogens spread and interact, they create the stunning spots and stripes we see in nature. But here's the kicker. The math behind this process is incredibly precise. On an animal's body where there's more space, you get spots. But on thinner areas like legs or tails, the same equations produce stripes. This mathematical model explains why a leopard has spots on its body but stripes on its tail. It's not just biology, it's a beautiful fusion of chemistry and mathematics playing out on nature's canvas. Reaction diffusion systems describe processes where substances, or reactants, interact chemically, reaction, and spread out in space, diffusion. These systems are governed by partial differential equations that model how the concentration of each reactant changes over time and space. Under certain conditions, these systems can produce stable, self-organising patterns. Alan Turing, in his seminal 1952 paper, proposed that reaction diffusion systems could explain the spontaneous formation of complex patterns in biological systems, such as animal coat markings, seashell designs, and even the arrangement of chemical signals in early embryonic development. These are now called Turing patterns. In nature, the spots on a leopard or the stripes on a zebra may result from reaction diffusion processes in their skin during development. Chemical signals, called morphogens, interact to form stable patterns that guide pigmentation. Think of reaction diffusion systems as a painter working on a canvas. The painter applies different colours, reactants, that spread and interact in specific ways, eventually forming intricate and beautiful patterns without any further intervention. Turing patterns emerge when a reaction diffusion system undergoes a process called diffusion-driven instability. This occurs when the diffusion rates of two interacting chemicals, an activator and an inhibitor, differ significantly. The activator promotes the formation of a pattern, while the inhibitor suppresses it. Key conditions for Turing patterns. Activator and inhibitor interaction. The activator increases its own production and that of the inhibitor. The inhibitor, in turn, suppresses the activator. Different diffusion rates the inhibitor diffuses much faster than the activator, creating localised areas of high activator concentration. These interactions lead to spatially heterogeneous distributions of chemicals, resulting in stable, repeating patterns. Consider a petri dish experiment where two chemicals react and diffuse. Initially, the chemicals are uniformly distributed. Over time, spots or stripes appear spontaneously, demonstrating the formation of Turing patterns. Imagine a crowd at a concert. If the people, activators, in one area start dancing energetically, they draw in others, forming a dense dancing cluster. Security guards, inhibitors, moving faster, spread out to maintain order and limit the size of the cluster. This dynamic interaction between the crowd and guards creates distinct clusters of dancers, analogous to Turing patterns. 
Turing patterns are described by a set of coupled reaction diffusion equations. In a chemical reaction known as the balorsov jabotinsky reaction, when coupled with diffusion, one can observe the formation of intricate wave-like Turing patterns, demonstrating these equations in action. Consider a lake with two types of fish, predators, inhibitors, and prey, activators. The prey reproduce locally, attracting predators, but predators move faster across the lake. Over time, clusters of prey surrounded by predators emerge, creating distinct population patterns akin to Turing structures. Different parameter sets in reaction diffusion systems yield various Turing pattern types. Spots, small isolated regions of high activator concentration. Stripes, linear bands of alternating high and low activator concentration. Labyrinths, complex interconnected patterns resembling a maze. Waves, traveling patterns that oscillate over time. These patterns depend on the initial conditions and the relative strengths of the reaction and diffusion terms. The pigmentation patterns on certain fish species, like the angelfish, exhibit both stripes and spots depending on the species' developmental stage, illustrating the diversity of Turing patterns in biology. Think of a music equaliser visualiser. Depending on the song's frequency distribution, you may see distinct bars, spots, continuous waves, stripes, or chaotic movements, labyrinths, each representing different patterns emerging from the same system. Turing patterns provide a theoretical framework for understanding various biological phenomena, particularly in morphogenesis, the process by which cells and tissues develop specific structures and forms. Key examples. Animal coats, stripes on tigers, or spots on leopards arise from Turing-like processes in pigment cells. Fish skin patterns, patterns on tropical fish, such as zebrafish, result from chemical gradients formed during development. Embryonic development. In early stages, reaction diffusion mechanisms guide the formation of structures like fingers, feathers, and even organ precursors. The feather arrangement in bird embryos is thought to be influenced by Turing patterns, where chemical signals dictate the spacing and alignment of feather buds. Turing patterns in biology are like a blueprint for construction. Just as a blueprint dictates where walls, doors and windows will be placed, Turing patterns guide where cells differentiate to form specific structures. While Turing patterns are most famously associated with biology, they also occur in non-biological systems, such as chemical reactions. The BZ reaction, mentioned earlier, showcases Turing patterns in purely chemical settings. Material science. Engineers can use reaction diffusion principles to design materials with specific patterns, such as self-assembling polymers. Ecology. Population distributions in ecosystems, like vegetation patterns in arid regions, often resemble Turing patterns. In arid environments, vegetation tends to form distinct patches or stripes, which maximise water usage efficiency. These patterns are consistent with reaction diffusion dynamics where plants, activators and nutrients, inhibitors, interact. 
It's like a city's layout evolving based on resource distribution. Residential areas, vegetation, cluster around water sources, while barren areas expand between them, creating a patterned landscape. Studying Turing patterns involves both experimental and computational methods. Experimental – using chemical reactions or biological systems to observe pattern formation in controlled settings. Computational – simulating reaction diffusion equations to predict pattern behaviour under different conditions. Modern advances in computational power allow researchers to simulate complex systems, exploring how changes in parameters influence pattern formation. Using computational models, researchers can simulate how changes in diffusion rates affect the transition from spots to stripes in a reaction diffusion system. Simulating Turing patterns is like using a flight simulator to test different weather conditions and aircraft behaviours before actual flights, allowing for safe and precise predictions. Despite significant progress, challenges remain in fully understanding and utilising Turing patterns. Parameter sensitivity. Small changes in reaction or diffusion rates can drastically alter patterns. Real world complexity. Biological systems often involve multiple interacting layers, complicating the simple two component models. Application integration. Scaling reaction diffusion systems for practical use in material science or engineering requires further innovation. Future research aims to apply Turing patterns in synthetic biology, tissue engineering and advanced material design. Efforts are underway to use Turing patterns for growing synthetic tissues with predefined structures revolutionising regenerative medicine. Think of reaction diffusion systems as early prototypes of engines. They work well in controlled conditions, but refining them for practical real-world applications requires solving many technical and theoretical challenges. Turing patterns exemplify the power of self-organisation in nature and technology. From the stripes of a zebra to the intricate designs in chemical reactions, these patterns reveal the underlying simplicity and elegance of complex systems. As our understanding deepens, Turing patterns may unlock new possibilities in fields ranging from biology to artificial intelligence, showcasing the universality of these mesmerising formations